Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Snook with section 7.3, which is multivariable linear systems. We're now going to go to systems that have three variables. So think of it as x, y, and z. And our objectives today are to use back substitution to solve the linear systems in row echelon form. We're going to use Gaussian elimination to solve the systems, and we're going to solve non-square systems. So first up, we're going to do what's called back substitution in row echelon form. So row echelon form looks like this system of equations we have here. We've got three equations and three variables. So three equations three variables. And if you notice the first row, which I'm going to call row one, it has an X, a Y, and a Z. So it's got all three. The second row, which I'm calling row two, only has two equations. It has just the Y and just the Z. So sorry, only two variables. And then our third row, Row three only has one variable, and that is z. z equals two, so in fact, that equation is already solved for us. So that's what row echelon looks like. You have three variables in the first row, two in the second, and those two are y and z, and one in the third, which is just z. And then notice here, we have sort of these open spaces, because there's no x in equation two, and there's no x or y in equation three. So that's what row echelon form looks like. Now backwards substitution, what that means is I'm going to take row three, which is y equals z, and I can substitute that into row two. And it looks like this. So y plus four times two equals seven. So y plus 8 equals 7, y equals negative 1. So by substituting row 3 into row 2, that's the backward substitution, I was able to solve for y. Now I'm going to backward substitute again. So x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. So x minus 2 times negative 1, which I solved for the y plus three times two, which we already knew was z, that equals nine. So then I get x plus two plus six equals nine. That's gonna give me x equals one. So my answer to this system, and this is called a triple, uh, we've done ordered pairs before where you had x and y, but now I've got x, y, and z. So this is called a triple. My answer is gonna be one, negative 1 and 2. So x, y, and z. Let's write that on the bottom. x, y, and z. So this is what our answers are going to look like. All right, so example 2 now, we're going to use Gaussian elimination. And what that means is uh, we're going to do what's called elementary row operations. And the purpose of that is to manipulate this system so that it is in row echelon form. So we're going to use elementary row operations to put the system in a row echelon form. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then when we have that, we're going to do our backwards substitution. to solve the system. So we're going to start with a system that looks like this. Notice each row has all three variables in it. We're going to do a, a series of operations that's going to make that system look like this one, where I've got three variables, two variables, and then one variable. So let's go ahead and get started so you know what I mean. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label each row. So this is going to be row one. Our first row in the system is row one. Our next one I'm going to call row two and our last one is row three. And I'm going to start off with looking at my first row and I have three variables in there. So row one is actually fine. I'm allowed three variables in my row echelon form and that's already there. So I'm not going to make any changes to row one. Now for row two, I have this negative x there and I need to eliminate that. So here's where elementary row operations come in. And what that means is I can add rows together, I can subtract rows, I can multiply rows and then add them or subtract them. And I'm going to write down each elementary row operation as I go. So my new row two, I'm going to make that equal to old row two plus row one. So this is the elementary row operation. And all I'm doing is I'm adding two rows together. So I'm going to write down row two, which was negative x plus 3y plus z equals negative 2. And I'm going to add row 1 to it, which is x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. When I add them together, the x's go away. And then 3y minus 2y is y. z plus 3z is 4z. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. So this is my new row 2. So now my system looks like this. x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. I'm going to put in my new row 2, which is y plus 4z equals 7. I didn't do anything to row 3, so I'm just going to copy that over. 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. Here's row 1, row 2, row 3. When you're doing your work, I do need you to write for me the row operation you're doing and then show the system that results. So what I've highlighted is what I absolutely need to see. That's the bare minimum. If you don't, I won't be able to follow your row operations and I'll have no idea what you're doing. So very important, please, please, please tell me which rows operations you're doing. So now I'm going to inspect my rows. Row one is still good. Row two only has two variables left. They're both Y and Z, that's good. So now I'm gonna work on row three. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna be rid of that two X. I wanna make that go away. So I'm going to do row 3 equals row 3 minus 2 times row 1. So here's another elementary row operation. This time I'm actually multiplying one of our rows together by a constant. And then I'm going to subtract them. So let's show you how that works. So row 3 currently is 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. That's our current row 3. I'm going to take row 2 and I'm going to multiply that row by negative 2. So y times a negative 2 is negative 2y and then I have plus 4z times that by a negative 2. I get negative 8z and then I'm going to do um, the 7 here, I'm going to multiply that by 2. So 7 times 2, or negative 2 here, is negative 14. Now let's add those together. I've already changed my sign, so I'm ready to add. Oh, and check it out, and I have a 
negative 2x here. So let's check and make sure that I have things copied over correctly. So row 3 is 2x minus 5y plus 5z is 17. Also very important when doing elementary row operations, check what you're doing. And I need to subtract 2 times row 1. So I get my negative 2x. And then 2 times row 1. So take a look here. I have a negative 2 times a negative 2y. So I have a 4y. And then I have a negative 2 times a 3z. Or, yeah, negative 2 times a 3z. So that's a 6z. The negative 6z. And then I'm going to take my 18 and I'm going to multiply that by negative 2, so I get negative 18. So row 3 is this first one right here. And then negative 2 row 1 is this one over here. So let's add these together. Those zeros go away. I have a negative 5y plus a 4y. I get a negative y. And then I have a 5z minus a negative, uh, plus a negative 6z is a negative z. And I get a negative 1. Okay, so now here's my system. Row 1 is x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. Row 2 is y plus 4z equals 7. And now my new row 3 is a negative y minus z equals negative 1. So here's my new system. Here's row 1, row 2, row 3. Now the next thing I need to eliminate in row 3 is that negative y. That has to go. That way I'll have z by itself. So to do that, I'm just going to add row 3 to row 2 because check it out, row 2 is a positive y. So if I add those together, that y that will go away. So now row 3 is going to equal row 3 plus row 2. Remember, write this so I know what you're doing. And then please write your new system. Do that every time as you go. And then when I do that, let's add row 2 and row 3. So here's row 2 is y plus 4z equals 7. Row 3 is negative y minus z equals negative 1. So when I add these together, my y's go away. I get 3z equals 6. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve that just because it's so easy. 3z equals 6, just divide both sides by 3, and I get z equals 2. So here's my new system. I have x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. I have y plus 4z equals 7, and I have z equals 2. Row 1, row 2, row 3. Now check this out. I'm ready to backwards substitute because right there is z solved. So let's go ahead and do our backwards substitution. So now I'm going to say y plus 4z equals 7. So y plus 4 times 2 equals 7. 4 times 2 is 8. So when I subtract 8 from both sides, I get y equals negative 1. All right, backwards substitute. I now have y and z. Plug them into row 1. x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. x minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 equals 9. So I get x plus 2 plus 6 equals 9. So 2 plus 6 is 8. Subtract that from both sides, x equals 1. So now the answer that's my triple is going to be 1, because x goes in the first spot, y goes in the second spot, which is negative 1, and z goes in the last spot, which is 2. And that's my final answer. All right, let's do another one. And I have 
I'm going to inspect my rows first. Here's row one, x minus three y plus z equals one. I'm allowed all three in row one, so check, that's good. Row two, I have a two x minus y minus two z equals two. So I do need to remove that two x. So I'm gonna take care of that first thing. And then I have row three. So the first row I'm gonna work on is row two. So I'm working on this one first. And what I'm trying to do is remove that 2x. I wanna eliminate that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to say that my new row two is going to equal row two minus two times row one. That's my elementary row operation. I'm gonna take row two and I'm gonna subtract from that two times row one. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna write this over here. So row two is two x minus y minus two z equals two. Now I'm gonna subtract two row one. So I'm gonna take that x, multiply that by negative two, I get negative two x. Negative two times negative three y gives me a positive six y. Negative two times z is a negative two z. And negative two times one equals negative two. Let's add those together. I get five y minus four z equals zero. That's my new row two. So here's my new system. X minus three y plus z equals one. That's my new row one. My new row two is this five y minus four z. So five y minus four z equals zero. So now that's row two. Row three I didn't change. I'm just gonna leave it as it was. So x plus two y minus three z equals negative one. And this is row three. Okay, here's my new system. Okay, the x got eliminated from row two. So now I'm gonna check row one is good, row two is good. Now I'm gonna focus on row three. First thing I'm going to do is remove that x. So to do that, I'm gonna say that row three, I'm just gonna subtract um, row one from row three. See if I do that, then I'm gonna have x minus this x up here and those x's are gonna go away. So row three minus row one. Here's row three. X plus two Y minus three Z equals negative one. Now I'm gonna subtract row one. So that means multiplying everything in row one by negative one. So a negative one times X is a negative X. Negative one times a three Y is a positive three Y. And then negative one times a positive z is negative z. And a negative one times one is negative one. Those go away. So I'm going to get five z minus four z equals zero. And that's my new row three. Okay, let's rewrite my system. X minus three y plus z equals one. That's row one. We never changed that. And then row two, I don't know why I wrote a z there, that's a y, five y. Row two, I'm just copying that down. Five y minus four z equals zero. And then here is row three, that's now five y, it's not zero, I'm sorry, negative one and negative one is negative two, it's five y minus four z equals negative two. So row two, row three, there's my new system. All right, next thing I need to do, I'm still working on row three. I need to eliminate that five y. And then I look at row two, it also has a five y. So I can just say that row three is going to be row three minus row two. I'm gonna subtract those two rows. So row three is five y 
minus 4z equals negative 2. Now subtracting row 2, going to multiply everything in row 2 by negative 1, so I get a negative 5y plus 4z equals 0. The y's cancel out, the z's cancel out, so I'm left with 0 on the left side equals negative 2 on the right side. 0 does not equal negative 2. So stop here. 0 doesn't equal negative 2. Therefore, I have no solution. This one is a no solution case. And I know that because 0 never equals negative 2. They are never, ever, ever, ever the same, no matter what. Never the same. So stop there, no solution. All right, let's go on to another one. Again, we're just going to do our same thing. We're going to do the Gaussian elimination. I look at my equations in my system. This one is row 1. This one is row 2. And this one is row 3. Row 1 is fine as it is. Row 2. I just have two variables. It's fine as it is. So I'm going to go straight to working on row 3. And the first thing I'm going to take care of is that x. I need that x to go away. It doesn't belong in row 3. And I can get rid of that x if I add row 3 and row 1. So my new row 3 is going to equal row 3 plus row 1. So here's row 3, negative x plus 2y equals 1. Row 1, I'm going to leave a little bit of space here. And then row 1 is x plus y minus 3z equals negative 1. Just add those together. My x's go away. That's what I wanted to see happen. And I have 3y minus 3z equals 0. That's my new row 3. So here's my new system. x plus y minus 3z equals negative 1. y minus z equals 0. As I made no changes to row 1 or row 2. I did change row 3. It is now 3y minus 3z equals 0. So there's my new system. X is gone from there. Now I need to remove that 3y because I'm only allowed a z all by itself in row 3. So row 3 is going to equal. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my current row 3 and I'm going to subtract from that 3 times row 2. Because when I multiply row 2 by 3, actually it's going to be a negative 3, I can then make those y's go away. So here's how that's going to work. So I'm going to write down row 3, and that's 3y minus 3z equals 0. And then I'm going to do negative 3 times row 2. So I have a negative 3 times a y, I get negative 3y. And then I have a negative 3 times a negative z, I get plus 3z. And a negative 3 times 0 is 0. Add them. The three y's cancel out, the three z's cancel out, so I have zero on the left side equals zero on the right side. So check this out. This means I have infinitely many solutions. Now we're not going to stop here because we can actually describe these solutions. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I write down what my new system is. And I think I'll just write it here. So here's my new system. Row 1 we didn't change. So x plus y minus 3z equals negative 1. Row 2 is still y minus z equals 0. There is no row 3. 
because that just turned into 0 equals 0. So this is what we would call a non-square matrix. This one is a non-square matrix. OK, just making sure I was still recording there. Notice I, have st I still have three variables, but now I only have two rows. That's why it's not square, because I need to have the same number of rows as variables, and I don't. This is non-square. So here's what you do here. We're going to make up a new variable. It's going to be A, and A is going to be any real number. And because Z just totally dropped out, my, my last line un dropped out totally, I'm going to say that Z equals A. Okay, That gives me something I can backwards substitute. And so now it's backwards substitution. Backwards substitute substitute, can't spell. So I'm going to take that z and I'm going to substitute it in our second equation. So y minus z equals 0. Put in a for z. If I'd had an answer, I'd have put that in. So I'm just going to use a for that answer. So y equals a. So now I have an answer for z and an answer for a. I'm going to backwards substitute again, this time into our first equation. x plus y minus 3z equals negative 1. Well, I know that x is what I'm looking for, so that's x. I figured out y is going to be a, so I'm going to put a in for y. And then I'm going to put a in for z. So I get x plus a minus 3a equals negative 1. Combine your like terms in here. So I get x minus 2a equals negative 1. And then, since I'm just trying to get x by itself, I'm going to add 2a to both sides. So x equals 2a minus 1. So now, when I write my triple for my answer, in the x spot, I'm going to put 2a minus 1. And in the y spot, I'm going to put a. In the z spot, I put a. That's my final answer. And that describes our infinitely many solutions. For example, I can choose any number I want for a. So let's choose 1 for a. If a is 1, and then 2a minus 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So 1, 1, 1 is a solution. Let's put in 2 for a. So I put a 2 and a 2. And then 2a minus 1 goes in the x spot. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. That's a solution. Let's put in 3 for a. So uh, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. That's a solution. But if I put 4 here, 3 times 3, not a solution. Because that doesn't fit. So this is what I mean by describing our solutions. There are infinitely many solutions, but there are some that won't work. Like 4, 3, 3 does not work. It doesn't fit. It's not 2a minus 1. All right, that's it um, for, today's, for today's lesson, everybody. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a great day.